war was now about to close and a new reckoning was due to follow. Retribution was the new word to follow victory. A new cloud was gathering. It threatened every collaborator, every coward, every double agent. These traitors were now beginning to look over their shoulders. One person in particular. Today, a highly respected person. Then, a traitor and a double agent. Now, hold this line open. Uh, what the hell? Ah, I thought you'd make a move. But it's too late. I finished. It's all down here. Tomorrow the whole world will know you for what you really are. Do you remember I always used to say to you, Festinare Lente? Well, now it's too late. Oh, yes, you can smile. But this time your blackmail won't work. Your threats won't prevent me from destroying you. As far as I'm concerned, while you're free, the war is still on. And I won't rest at... You're bluffing. You wouldn't... Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Evening. Welcome to another edition of Who Done It. Now you've just seen a murder, and whoever done it will get life for killing a general. But of course, for shooting a clock, you only get time. Now we want you at home to try and find out who done it. Now we will show you in a moment the rest of the story, after which the suspects will be cross-examined here in the studio by tonight's four celebrity guests. Now, first, let me welcome the old gentleman himself from Spring and Autumn, Mr. Jimmy Jewell, or as I used to know him in the old up the pole days, Copper Jewell. Old gentleman? I'm not so old, you know. No? No. Oh. Well, in that case, I'm younger than I think. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, here, for a real touch of spring, we have the lovely Amy MacDonald. <laughs> now someone who was recognised as Paul Temple, but tonight is appearing as himself, Mr Francis Matthews. Now, if anyone had to apprehend a murderer, who better equipped from the job <coughs> and brimming with vitamin C than Henry Cooper? <laughs> now, we've selected four people from our studio audience to also try and solve who done it. So, welcome. <clears throat> now, let's go back now to the crime. Now, all our suspects will no doubt have their alibis ready, but remember, their flashbacks are not necessarily true, so don't believe everything that you see or hear. Now, the guilty person is allowed to lie. I'll give you a minor clue, though. The parrot is not allowed to lie. <laughs> so over to Inspector Martin, CID. It's a bit of a mess, sir. Eh? Yes, it usually is. All right, bring him in. Would you come in, Miss Dixon? Inspector. My sympathies, madam. I won't keep you any longer than I need. You are the wife of the late General Sir Ralph Dixon, DSO, MC, retired. Yes, Inspector. Mr. Harold Adams, sir. This is a terrible thing, Inspector. A terrible thing. Yes, sir. Even I'm so sorry. Miss Sarah Randall, sir? Oh, you are the General Secretary. That's right. Do sit down. It was you who discovered the General. Yes. Uh, could you tell me what happened when you arrived this morning? Why, I arrived at 8.30, as usual.
I collected the mail. I... I saw that the door of the sitting room was open, and I looked in. I saw that the window had been forced, and I saw the mess. I then ran upstairs to the general's study and found him. I then telephoned you. Was the tape recorder still on? Oh, it was on, but not running. It's automatic. It stops when the tape runs out. And how long does the tape run? The general always uses long-running cassettes. He, he does not like handling the equipment. Once he starts recording, he leaves it on. He says that switching it on and off spoils his concentration. I loaded the recorder before I left last night at about 8 o'clock. And how long does the cassette run? An hour. Thank you. What nationality are you? French. French? You don't have a typical accent? I suppose not. I was born in Strasbourg, on the German border. I served with the Allies during the war. It was then that I first met the General. I see. Lady Dixon, are you sure that you left here at exactly 8 o'clock last night? Oh, I'm positive. I wanted to catch the 8.30 train from Richmond to Waterloo. Lady Dixon, you first met the General during the war? Oh, no, not really. I met him once, very briefly, before the war. It was at some charity do at the Italian Embassy. My father was their press advisor at the time. When the war started, I joined the International Red Cross. And, well, because I spoke Italian, I was sent to Italy. I met Ralph again. It was towards the end of the war, and we, we married soon afterwards. Mr. Adams. Yes, I, I was Ralph's best man at the wedding. Yes, yes, I see. So you've known the General over many years? Yes, I was a war correspondent. I met the General just after D-Day. He was planning an operation involving the French resistance. I remember the date very well. It was July the 11th. Uh, it's my birthday. That's how I remember. Oh, yes, yes, I see. Uh, you're now in publishing. That's right, yes. I'm publishing the General's book. Yes, correct me if I'm wrong. It's called The True War, and it's the General's reminiscences on his wartime service. Yes, that's right, but it's a bit more than that, really. It's the General's way of making some true disclosures that up to now have had to be kept very secret. If I may interrupt... Uh, yes, of course. I think I can add to that. I've typed all the manuscripts so far. It, it was very much an expose of corruption and treachery. The General had planned to use the book to praise some people and to condemn others. Yes, I've read your outline notes on the book. You're all mentioned in it, with the addition of uh, two people who are in London at this time. I've invited them here. Jones? Miss Sparrow, sir. Oh, 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 poor Evelyn. Excuse me, madame. But uh, you are Miss Catherine Barrow. After 30 films and 10 press agents, you still have to ask me that? You uh, knew the general well? Well? Well, no, no. Th that is not the right word. Uh, Intimately? No. Well, that is not right either. No, no, let me see. Uh, uh, very, very closely. Yes, very closely. You see, he saved my life during the war. We were surrounded. Oh, you were in we the resistance? A... Oh, yes. Yes, we were trapped. The, the general organized a counterattack, and the diversion allowed most of us to get away. Except for my fiancé, Henri Vadom. He was captured and shot. And it was your story of this incident that gave you fame in the press world. Yes, that's right. I got the story before anybody else. Yes, you were called Speedy Adams after that, weren't you? <laughs> yes, that's right. I remember my editor sending me up when my so-called <laughs> friends in oh, Fleet Street <laughs> sent me up when they heard I think that was the front door, boss. Uh, that'll be Captain Woodland. Captain Woodland. That's right. We're in the drawing room. Fine, thanks. Sorry to be late. This is a terrible business even, and I'm so sorry. I uh, served under him for over three years, you know. Damn fine officer, if you ask me. Yes. Captain Woodland, you complete the list of uh, people mentioned in this unfinished book. Miss Barrow, have an entire chapter to yourself. Mr. Adams, Lady Dixon, Miss Romany, you all feature prominently. 
It's my guess that one of you will appear in the final chapter. The question is, who? Welcome back to Who Done It and our panel of experts who are trying to find out who killed General Sir Ralph Dixon, DSO MC retired. Have you solved it yet, Jim? Pardon? Have you solved it yet? I think the parrot did it. <laughs> I, I, I've seen that parrot somewhere before, you know. I, I'm sure yeah, I have. I'm sure you have. It's a very old bird. Now, before Charming, we rejoin the action, let me recap the story so far. General Sir Ralph Dixon has just finished his war memoirs. Somebody who doesn't want to be mentioned in his book kills him. The general secretary is questioned by Inspector Martin. She found the body. Also being questioned is Harold Adams, the general's friend and publisher. He's just sold the book for £100,000. Catherine Barrault, French film star, also knows the general from the war days. Another wartime friend of the general's is Captain George Woodland. Who knows Lady Dixon, the general's wife? Inspector Martin continues the investigation. Mr. Adams, was the date set for the publication of the book? Yes, in about two months' time. I had already received an advance of over £100,000 for the book and the film rights. Now, with all this publicity, probably go even higher. And who will receive these royalties? Well, Lady Dixon, of course. Mr. Romney, can you tell us what happened in the final chapter of the book? The exposure of a double agent. Apparently this person is still living today and was responsible for the death of hundreds of Allied soldiers and patriots during the last campaigns of the war. Well, why did the General wait so long before making these disclosures? He was being blackmailed. During the war, his brother, unknown to the General, was running a very large black market operation and the general unwittingly used some large financing from his brother to start some new ventures after the war. His brother died last year, so now he was free to tell the whole story. But you knew the whole story. You could have been blackmailing the general. I would never do that. I... I was very fond of him. Last night, somebody apparently broke in here, took the general's guns from his glass cabinet on the wall, entered his study and fired three shots. Two of them killing him, the third smashing into the clock face and stopping the clock at 9.32 p.m. Then the murderer took the notes to the final chapter of the book. We have two witnesses, one a parrot, not very talkative, the other a tape recorder, which was left switched on throughout the crime and after. This tape is very talkative and I want you all to listen very carefully. This time your blackmail won't work. Your threats won't prevent me from destroying you. As far as I'm concerned, while you're free, the war is still on. And I won't rest the... You're bluffing. You wouldn't... Oh dear. <laughs> The motive appears to be the prevention of the exposure of a double agent. The murder took place just after 9.30 last night. I'd like you all to account for where you were at that time. Lady Dixon, this is just for the record. Yes, of course, Inspector. <clears throat> well, yesterday my husband had an accident with his hearing aid. He dropped it on the carpet and trod on it. He really is 
But he, he was very deaf without it, so I, I promised to go down to Petworth to our cottage and get the spare one. Well, I, I left here about eight o'clock, but when I got to Guildford at about five past nine, I felt so tired that I decided I'd, I'd spend the night at the cottage and come back in the morning. So I rang Ralph to tell him. But there was no answer. Well, naturally, I assumed that he couldn't hear the telephone without his hearing aid. So I rang off and drove on. And I arrived at the cottage at about oh, 9.45. Did you have a housekeeper at the cottage? No. You were alone? Yes. Yes, quite alone. No one saw you arrive? No. You must understand that I'm uh, trying to establish a witness that you arrived there uh, after 9.30. Yes, of course, Inspector, and I really am doing my best to help you. Yes, I see. It's I that I'm trying to help you. What time did you return this morning? Well, Sarah rang me at nine o'clock and told me the terrible news. In Woodland, you're an advisor on war features for the Daily News. Yes, yes, you might say that. I suppose you were on all my movements last night, all that sort of thing. Yes, exactly. I left my office at seven o'clock, went into my pub just off Fleet Street, had a drink with some chums and went off home. And what time was that? About eight o'clock. And you stayed in? Yes, yes. Wanted to watch that documentary on television, you know, World at War. Miss Barrow, what did you do last night? <laughs> last night, Inspector, was the most innocent night of my life. I, I was going to the premiere of my new film, it is called Toute la Nuit. It means all night long. I had invited Lady Dixon to go with me, but when she told me she could not go, I, I telephoned to Harold, uh, Mr. Adams, and he said he would be delighted to accompany me. At what time did you pick up, Miss Barrow? Oh, he arrived at exactly seven o'clock. He is always very punctual. But unfortunately, I had developed the most dreadful migraine, and... It was so severe that I could not go to the premiere after all. Uh, so, uh, oh, Mr. Adams left me around eight o'clock. Then I telephoned my doctor. Uh, he came around about uh, nine. He gave me uh, an injection, and uh, within ten minutes I was asleep. And what did you do then, sir? Me? Oh, I uh, left Catherine, and I decided to pop in on Ralph. It must have been about eight twenty. I called because I knew he had just about finished the last chapter, and, well, naturally, I was very anxious to read it. I rang, and it seemed a very long time before he answered the door. But when he did, he looked very upset. In fact, he was rather rude. He wouldn't let me in. Well, I had the impression that there was somebody else there. Anyway, I could see that I was annoying him, so I said good night and left. I then went straight to my club. Oh, I did see one thing as I left. I remember seeing a car drive away. Can you remember what sort of a car it was? Yes. It was a light-coloured drop-head Bentley. All right, all right, Harold. We all know it was my car George, that you saw. Don't. No choice, my dear. I took Lady Dixon to the cottage at Petworth. We stayed the night there. I see. Toute la nuit. <laughs> I must thank you all for your cooperation. You've been very helpful. I won't detain you much longer. Jones, get the tape ready. As you see, quite a few things have been smashed in this room. The glass case, where the general guns were taken from. The window, where the break-in was supposed to have been made. Suppose. Inspector, you're not suggesting that all this is the result of a party, are you? Doesn't really matter what happened in this room, sir. Listen. Retribution was the new word to follow victory. A new cloud was gathering. It threatened every collaborator, every coward, every double agent. These traitors were now beginning to look over their shoulders. One person in particular. Today, a highly respected person. Then, a traitor and a double agent. Now, hold this line open. Uh, what the hell? Look again at this room. Wouldn't you say all this would have made quite a noise? Now, I'm not surprised that the general didn't hear it. But I am surprised that this amount of noise wasn't picked up by the recorder one floor above. Out there. Out there. Out there. Out there. Out there. Out there. Why 
find the telephone. Now, you've all told me that you were somewhere else at 9.30, but that doesn't really matter either, because the murder took place about 8.30, an hour earlier. Listen to this. o'clock. It's a good witness, don't you think? Lady Dixon, that tape finished at 9.20. It was uh, an hour-long running tape, so it started at 8.20. Your phone call wasn't recorded, so it must have been made after 9.20, which means that... Uh, you were later than estimated at arriving at Petworth. It means that you could have been here at 8.30. Mr. Adams, you left Miss Barrow at about 8 o'clock and you called here at about 8.20. You can prove where you were at 9.30, but you can't prove where you were at 8.30. Miss Romney, you've told us that you caught the 8.30 from Richmond but you didn't tell us that most of the trains to Waterloo last night were delayed by 30 minutes owing to a mechanical breakdown. Captain Woodland, you have a dual alibi with Lady Dixon for 9.30, but you could have been with her at 8.30 in this house. I must tell you now that uh, thanks to modern electronics, I have our murderer and double agent in this room. How dare? Hmm. How dare? How dare? Well, that's it. Inspector Martin's investigation is over, and ours is about to begin. But first, let's have a ripple for the suspects here in the studio. A ripple, please. <laughs> Are you ready to begin? Now, before you start your questions, is there any part of the action that you'd like played back? Now, you can pick any replay of up to 20 seconds. We'll start with the ladies first. What would you like? Oh, I'd like all of it, actually. <laughs> I'm but afraid you can't have all no. of it. You can have one little piece of it. Which little piece would you like? Well, I'd like the piece where um, Madame Barrow enters. and Because I, I want to hear what she says... Um, when the, the, what the inspector says to her about how she comes into the book, you know? Yes, indeed. I think it's that little section. You think? Yes. You're not sure? Well, can I just see when she comes in up, up until the inspector asks her that question? Of course you can. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> James? Pardon? Uh, Jimmy? Uh, what? Uh, what replay would you like? Well, I don't know why, but uh, I think I, I haven't got a clue what it's all about, you know. <laughs> It'll uh, come clear to you later on. Well, it's, it's, I hope it does. It's, it's not going to be very clear at the moment. I'd like to see where the murderer picks up the book after he shot him. Now, don't ask me why. <laughs> I, wasn't I don't know why. Ask, I wasn't going to ask you why. <laughs> I'm very glad it? that you asked to see that bit. I like that bit myself. Did you write? Yes. 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 Where'd you get your echo? In the pet shop. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, go on. Yours has grown in the last 25 yes, minutes. Exactly. Yes, it has. I shared it every year. <laughs> Francis, what replay would you like? Um, well, I'd, I'd like to see a bit very close to what uh, Jimmy wants to say. I'd like to see immediately after the killing, immediately after the shooting of the colonel or the general. Was it general or a colonel? The general. general. The general. I'd like to see immediately after when, when the gun is placed on the clock. When the gun is placed on the clock. Yes. Yes, indeed. That's quite clear. Thank you very much. Henry. Well, I would like to see the bit as the door just swings open from then on till after the shooting. 
at the beginning. something in my mind, but it's not quite clear. Now. I think that's going to clear the, the part up for Where the door yeah. swings open, open just before the shooting. And then I, no, I want I want to see like see the or you know hear the murder. You want to hear the murder. I want to hear the murder. You don't want to see it. You just want to hear. I it. just want to hear. It. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, well, while they're finding these replays, we'll start with some questions. One question each. Uh, Jimmy. Yes. Well, I would like to ask uh, Madame Barrow and Captain Woodland if they both served in the resistance together. Are you asking me first? Yes, please. No, I never met Captain Woodland during this time oh. because we were in different parts of France, you know. Did you serve in the resistance? No, no, I was with the, the general the British on Army. His, on his staff, yeah, yeah. I see. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jimmy. Amy. Um, I would like to ask Miss Romany, if I may, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am... You I suppose lie. I have to tell you can the lie if you like. <laughs> uh, forty-eight. <clears throat> ah, that surprises me. <laughs> <laughs> Only Amy and Doc Macdonald could answer questions like that. Just <laughs> <laughs> yes, it surprises me too. <laughs> Francis, a question, please. Yes, uh, Miss Romany, uh, you don't look forty-eight. Thank may you. I say? But could I ask you? Uh, how long you have known Mr. Adams? I have only known Mr. Adams since, oh, about three years. Then I came to England to work with the General on the book. And did, did we hear you say that you knew the General during the war? Yes, I served for him. You did? During yeah. the war, yes. And um, may I go on asking just one? Uh, no, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm yes. sorry, Francis, because ah. the first replay is ready. Thank now, you. it seems that Henry, <laughs> Francis and Jimmy have all asked more or less to see the same replay. So what we're going to do is we're going to play one piece right the way through. So here it is for you. Now, hold this line open. Uh, what the hell? Ah, I thought you'd make a move. But it's too late. I finished. It's all down here. Tomorrow the whole world will know you for what you really are. Do you remember I always used to say to you, Festinare Lente? Well, now it's too late. Oh, yes, you can smile. But this time, your blackmail won't work. Your threats won't prevent me from destroying you. As far as I'm concerned, while you're free, the war is still on. And I won't rest at... You're bluffing. You wouldn't. How dare? 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 Right. Three and one. D does that help you at all? Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it much worse for me. <laughs> no, I, thought I, I thought I had it. It's completely confused. Oh, now you can start all over again. Good can't grief. I haven't the Henry, time. can I have a question from you, please? Yes, I would like to ask Captain Woodland if he knew, if he understood, what was it, Latin, the general that said when he said something about them, oh, yeah. when I used to say Fentis, Laris, whatever it was, uh, did you understand uh, that? Complete mystery to me, old man, complete, <laughs> absolute, no, no, no. Did you go to Sandhurst? Was you um, an officer well, trained yes. to Sandhurst? Uh, no, I didn't actually go to Sandhurst. Oh, no, actually. No. Uh, uh, thank you. All right, Henry? Yes, sir. Uh, Festinari Lente, I believe, is what you were searching for. That's right. what I was saying. Yes, very great. rare nowadays. Mm, yeah, it is. <laughs> 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 you catch it off parrots. <laughs> very painful too, I believe. Yes. <laughs> you catch it off parrots. <laughs> but what does it mean, actually? Because that's very important. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, Amy. I can't answer that just for one minute because the red light's up again already for your replay, which I oh. think is much more important. You would like to see Madame Barrow's entrance. Yes. Jones? Miss Barrow, sir. Oh, 
Oh, pauvre Evelyne. Mais quelle horreur, quelle tragédie. Et comment tu es... Excuse me, madame. Comment ça se... But uh, you are Miss Catherine Barrow. After 30 films and 10 press agents, you still have to ask me that? You uh, knew the general well? Well? Well, no, no. Th that is not the right word. Uh, intimately? No. Well, that is not right either. No, no, let me see. Uh, uh, very, very closely. Yes, very closely. You see? Right, Amy, did that help? Mm, not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to ask another question? Then? Well, well you, can I ask a question? Of yes. Of course, yes. It puzzles me slightly, um, Madame Barrow, that you obviously speak English very well, and yet you yes. had terrible trouble finding the right word to describe your relationship with the general. Well, Why is that? You see, because uh, during the war, uh, he, he saved my life, as I said, uh, after this incident. So, uh, I, I couldn't... Uh, it, it was a question of closeness during the war. Since then, <clears throat> I had seen him socially, and I, I knew him and his wife. I, I used to visit them occasionally. May I ask you how he saved your life, exactly? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm uh, you see, we... I'm oh, so sorry no. to interrupt you. I'm afraid I'd we haven't really time explain. for that. <laughs> the time is up. I'm so sorry. And <laughs> that is the last question. Uh, now, panel, uh, would you like now to write down uh, who done it? and as many clues as you can think of. Now, this applies to our audience panel as well, because one of you, of course, could win our trophy. Now, don't forget, the guilty party could be more than one person. Now, after our break, we're going to show you at home who done it and how it was done. Or well, they say that old soldiers never die, they only fade away, which is just what we're going to do for a few minutes. So, see you after the break. <laughs> of all the cards from the experts, so they can't change their minds. But first we have a winner from our audience panel. Now this is interesting because the gentleman who won gave no clues as to why he thought this, this gentleman had done so His name is Mr. Mike Toogood from Basildon in Essex. Congratulations, Mr. Toogood. <laughs> you might be interested to know that uh, you win uh, this extremely acceptable gift uh, from Thames Television. <laughs> right, now, panel, I want you to tell us who done it and give us a clue. Jimmy. Well, after great deliberation and self de years of self-denial, <laughs> I think Harold Adams did it. Because he said he received £100,000 for the book and the film rights and it would be worth much more now with the publicity. I see. Thank you. Amy. <laughs> well, I was a little confused because at the scene of the murder, watching um, the general looking at the person, I thought, oh, it's got to be a very tall man, you see. Because he was sort of looking up at him, wasn't he? Well, he was mm. sat down, man. <laughs> 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 Oh, dear. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> you mustn't forget about things like that. Oh, dear. Yes. Oh, that's right. No, but anyway, I haven't finished. Oh, you haven't? No, because <laughs> then um, when I did my thing, you know, I decided it was, it was Sarah. <laughs> I see. Yes, because she lied twice, you see. Yes. And the murderer's the only one that's allowed to lie. Yes, you're quite you know? right there. Absolutely yeah. right. I'm not saying you are right, but you're quite right there. <laughs> Francis. When did she lie twice? Never mind. Well, I, th I, I think it was Harold Adams and Sarah Romany in cahoots. I think they did it together. And I think because the clock was pushed forward an hour, Sarah was the first to find the body. And she <coughs> reset the clock and recorded the chime of nine o'clock on the tape recorder. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> rubbish, but interesting. <laughs> <laughs> interesting rubbish. Henry Cooper. <laughs> Well, I think it was that dirty red Captain Woodland. <laughs> because when he walked into the room and the general looked up to him, 
he spoke this Latin, what we've just said it was, and that could have been an army motto, which I think it was, and Captain Woodland would have been the only one who would have understood that and who the general could have said that to quite often because he said, I've always said so-and-so, so-and-so to you, so that's why I think it's Captain <laughs> Woodland. <laughs> anyway. I'd like to hear that it's later. It's, I'd like it's to hear that later. Later. I, I can now see why you won so many fights, you'll never breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's very interesting. So that's what you all think, is it? Well, we'll now see where you were right or where you were wrong. Will the real whodunit stand up, please? No, sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, I got it right. I'm all right, Francis. we were right. <laughs> Yes, Harold Adams. Well, well, I've always heard that publishers were tough, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> well, panel, now then, uh, all I've got to say to you is that three of you were wrong and one of you were right. It was Jimmy, am I right? No, ha but, but, but Francis no, no, was right. No, Jimmy was wrong because not, I said it was Because uh, he said collusion. it was somebody else yeah. as well, you see. Oh. So, Jimmy, you got it right. Your clues were interesting, entirely incorrect, but nevertheless, <laughs> <laughs> you got it right, so you win £50. Well, I'm a congenital idiot, you know. Well, you oh, not very, considering yeah. you did very well. <laughs> you win £50, which will go to the charity of your own choice. Thank you very and much. And you also get, of course, uh, this Do I? acceptable gift. Thank you very much. magnifying glass. <laughs> I've always wanted sure one of those. At your age, you're coming very useful. <laughs> right, now, to end those arguments at home, we're now going to show you what Inspector Martin has deduced. Of course, he's absolutely right, as always. And here is how it was done. Harold Adams knew that he would be ruined if he was exposed as a double agent during the war. But if he waited until the general had almost finished the book, he could sell the rights for over £100,000. He was trained to pick locks in the war, so it was easy to get into the general's house, enter the study and kill him. He altered the time to ensure his alibi at his club, but he did not see the tape recorder under the general's desk. He made the mistake of wrecking the drawing room to simulate a break-in after killing the general, not realising that the noise would have been recorded on the tape before the gunshots, not after. The tape recorder broke his alibi and his story about ringing the front doorbell for an almost deaf man to hear finally gave him away. Uh, incidentally, another clue for those Latin scholars, the general did say at the very beginning, festinare lente, which means hasten slowly. And don't forget that Harold Adams' nickname in the war was Speedy. Everything else was a red herring. Did you get it right? Well, never mind. We'll have another chance next week. It's back to the army during the Second World War. I won't tell you who gets killed, but I'll give you a clue. It's called Goodbye, Sarge. <clears throat> so, and still then... Uh, thank you to the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the suspects. Oh, by the way, for you animal lovers at home, the parrot is going back to the zoo to dictate his memoirs. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>